The tools you need for doing the heavy lifting are a uh, lug wrench, a nice quality jack, hydraulic jack. Do not try to use the one that comes with your car. It's not going to be strong enough and your car is going to be wobbling around. Uh, it makes it a very dangerous situation. And of course some jack stands. Again, um, don't try to jack up your car with the uh, jack that comes with your car and expect it to uh, not fall over. It, uh, it will. So get some good quality jack stands and do the job safely. Tools you're going to need are some, uh, some sockets and I'll try to call out the sizes uh, when I'm doing the job. If you can, get 6 point as opposed to 12 point. There's a lot more surface area for the uh, socket to actually grab onto the nut or bolt. Reduces the chances of it uh, being rounded off. Breaker bar, probably some ratchets and stuff. Uh, of course, you're going to need a torque wrench, uh, some gloves, some safety glasses, and of course, some brakes. Uh, I purchased these uh, Aki Bono brand. I've been using them for years. I find that they stop very well at high speeds and uh, they produce very, very little brake dust. A few other tools that you're going to need are some way to compress your caliper pistons back into the calipers. Uh, I purchased this at uh, Harbor Freight for like 40 bucks or something like that. Uh, if you don't have one, your handy dandy C-clamp will work just fine. Before you jack up your car, you might want to break the lug nuts free. Also, if you put some tape around your lug wrench, it reduces the risk of the uh, lug wrench actually scratching up the, uh, your rims. Also, because these are five lug nut rims, you're going to want to skip every other lug nut when loosening and tightening. Start with one, skip a lug nut, skip a lug nut, skip a lug nut. That way you're not going to warp your rims. Just in front of the engine there is a uh, cross member that goes between the left hand and the right hand frame rails. There's a kind of a dimple on there. That's actually where I placed the jack to jack up the car. Then I simply place the jack stands under the uh, left and right uh, frame rails. Raise your hood so you can get to the, uh, your master cylinder. As you compress your pistons back in, the fluid here is going to rise. And if you've added brake fluid, uh, it chances are it, uh, it may leak out. So what you're going to want to do is take the cover off and put a, a paper towel or a rag or something around it to keep the, uh, any excess from spilling over into your car. Now that we have a tire off, uh, we can take a quick rundown of the parts. Uh, this is the caliper right here. There's the brake pad, one on uh, the outside and one on the inside. This is what they call the caliper bracket. Uh, if you need to take off your, um, your actual rotor itself, you're going to need to take all of this off. It's not hard to do, but you just have to do it. Uh, now's a good time to inspect the quality of your rotor. Uh, mine are in very good shape here. Uh, there's no grooves in it and there's no uh, little ridge at the very top or the outer part of the, um, of the rotor. Uh, so I'm not going to turn these things, I'm not going to replace these things. If you have very bad grooves in here or your rotors are warped, and the easiest way to tell is when you step on the brake and your steering wheel goes back and forth, these are warped. Um, if you have them warped, uh, don't try to turn them. Metal has memory and as soon as you step on the brake and they get hot again, they're going to warp again. So if they're warped, replace them, they're not that expensive. So what we're going to do is we're going to just simply uh, remove um, the bottom caliper bolt down here at the very bottom where my finger is. We're going to loosen the top one and this whole caliper is going to slide up. We'll be able to pop the brake um, pads out and pop the new ones back in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this uh, brake line uh, bracket right here. Uh, this is not meant to move a lot and as you're turning this around I don't want to put added stress on this brake line and actually uh, break it. This takes a 12 millimeter socket, just pop it right in there and take it right off. Of course, put this little bolt in a place where you can, uh, where you can find it. Now that the brake line is uh, free to move around, uh, there won't be any stress on it when I flip, flip, flip this whole caliper around. Let's go ahead and loosen up this very top um, caliper mounting bolt. This is a 14 millimeter. Here's where you're going to want your six point socket. And unfortunately, um, the, uh, the long slider pin that um, is behind here uh, isn't locked down with anything, so you're going to have to put a wrench on the back of it. This is where you're going to need a very special uh, wrench, the thinnest one that you can find to get the wrench between the caliper and the actual bolt itself. Once that that is in there, you can hold it with one and crank it with the other and loosen up that, uh, that top bolt. We're going to loosen up the top one, but I'm going to take the bottom one completely out.
Now this whole thing is free to slide up. Be very careful not to let that brake line get too stressed when you're moving it around. Now the caliper is, uh, is up. You can see the outer pad, the inner pad, and there's these cute little anti-squeal uh, springs. Um, the only way to get these things out is to get the caliper off. So you can imagine when you put these back on, it's going to want to pop these pads out. It takes a couple hands to do, but uh, uh, you can do it. So first let's pop these little springs out. They just come right out easily. And you can pop out your uh, brake pad. So a couple things, uh, there's a shim here and there's this cute little clip on the very top. My kit did not come with a new clip, uh, so I'm going to reuse the old one. There are some spring retainers uh, in the very bottom and the very top. Uh, those uh, will stay as well, but we're going to put a bunch of grease in here on the top and the bottom to make this nice and uh, easy to slide in and out. Let's go ahead and take this other pad out and I'll show you how to replace these uh, clips. You can see my old pads here, uh, new ones right next to them. These are actually in pretty good shape, the old pads that is. There's still a lot of, uh, lot of life left on them, but uh, to be honest with you, I'm just tired of all the brake dust. That's why I'm replacing them with these achy bonos. So here's a little clip here. Uh, the easiest way to get this out, and this is actually um, tough. You're not going to be able to take a screwdriver and pry it off this way or on the back of it. You're going to have to kind of put it down in the, um, in the uh, side of it and kind of wedge this little clip out and it pops right out. Make sure you get it in the same exact orientation so it simply goes to the, uh, to the back. Best way is to pop it right back on and you're done. It goes on that easy. If it didn't go out that easy uh, or, or go on that easy or come off that easy, uh, these things are actually they're pretty tight. They're not real easy to get off, but uh, if you pry, um, just take your time and pry them. You'll be able to pop them, pop them right off and get them uh, back on easily best way, if you noticed, uh, it's hard to see in the video here, I know, but there's a little, little tab here. A little, a little tab there. It's best if you put it that on first and then slide the front of it right around. It goes right back on, just like that. Okay, now the, uh, the new pads have got the clips on there. We're going to go ahead and grease them up and put them back in. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get some of this grease that came with the kit. If, it, if your kit didn't come with any grease, get some high temp special brake grease. And we're going to put some on the very bottom here and smear it all on this small resting foot and on that uh, spring clip. That way when the brakes come in and out from the pressure of your foot, it's not going to make that little squeaking sound. If you get any uh, grease on your rotors, don't worry, it's going to burn off the second that you hit your brakes. But just don't go hog well and get too much on there. Wipe it off. If, Wipe off any excess if you get too much on. All right, time to pop the pads in. Uh, they actually go in very easy, just kind of seat them between those little spring clips and uh, snap them right into place. Front one's easier, obviously, since I can see what I'm doing up here. But if they don't go in this easy, you've got something misaligned or some spring clip is, is kind of getting in the way of, uh, of seating them back in. But they should snap in just like that. Now that the pads are in, we can compress the uh, compressor pistons back in. Now, if you don't have this um, fancy spring compre uh, piston compressor, don't worry about it. Use a C-clamp. Most people use C-clamps. Um, I just happened to buy this because it was uh, only 40 bucks. Now, here's where I'm going to go very slowly. Um, these things aren't meant to go in real fast, so we're going to take our sweet time compressing these, these back in. I'm going to take uh, probably a couple minutes compressing this back in. I'm not going to go all the way in. I'm not going to bottom it out. I'm going to get it in just enough to clear the pads. So I'm going to go a little bit. I'm going to rotate it back on, try to install it. And if it's still not compressed enough, I'll rotate it back around and um, compress it some more. Okay, it's a bit tight, but it will work. So what I'm going to do is back this back out. 
This is where you're going to need to have a couple of hands here. Um, we're going to put the bottom spring on first. Find these little little mounting holes here. You got to hold it, otherwise it's going to pop right back open, like that. Okay, now that both springs are on, I'm going to very carefully rotate this around. And once you get the caliper just started on there, it will sort of hold itself and pop the rest, pop it the rest of the way on. The uh, caliper slider bolt is actually binding, so I'm going to have to kind of push it with my fingers here. Kind of hammer it in place with your hand. Then get the very back lower caliper slider bolt back into uh, place. Get some silicone spray and give those uh, little protective boots their little drink. Replace the brake, brake line retaining bracket. Inspect everything, make sure you got the bolts on, torqued correctly, no springs sticking out, and your brake line back on. Now for the rear brakes, I'm using the standard jack location on the uh, side frame of the car. Now the best place i found to put the jack stand is on the frame of the car, not too far from where the, uh, the actual jack is. Now that the back tire is off, we can see the caliper, caliper bracket, caliper uh, mounting bolts, and the bracket bolts right up, uh, right about here. Uh, again, check your rotors. If they're grooved or you have a real nasty ridge here, you're going to want to replace these rotors. These things are cheap enough. It's not worth turning them. First thing that you're going to want to do is, like before, remove that brake line. Next, we're going to loosen the cal caliper uh, mounting bolt. You may need a wrench on the back to hold this nut to keep it from spinning. I'm actually using a 14 millimeter. The challenge with this thing here is there's so much little little room there that your standard wrench won't fit. I'm actually using a, a like a racket, ratchet wrench that's a little bit narrower here, so I can hang on to this nut while I uh, spin this uh, bolt around. Now again, I'm not going to loosen it up completely. Now we'll do the one on the bottom. You might get lucky and uh, that um, the bolt inside may not spin. I happen to get lucky on this one, but if not, you're going to have to put a wrench in the very bottom as you're uh, removing it. Now that that is off, very carefully rotate your entire caliper assembly around. Watch your brake line. Now, this caliper is going to want to slide right back down, so what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece of wire, going to wrap it around here and wrap it around some other part of the, uh, the suspension part of the car to keep it from uh, falling back down on itself. Now you can easily get to the, uh, the two brake pads. Notice that this doesn't have the anti-squeal spring in here, it's just a matter of pulling these out, replacing that small um, retaining clip and then putting the new pads right back in. Retaining clips go at the very bottom. Let's go ahead and replace those. Again here, my old pads, they're actually in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of uh, life left, but again, I'm just replacing because I don't like the nasty brake dust that they have. Similar as before, just take a small screwdriver, jam it down in that crack and sort of pry it right off, and then just snap it right back into uh, place. Same with the rear, the inside one. Very carefully pry it off. Put the new one back in place. Double check to make sure that you have when, the, when they go together. You have the clips on the same side and they go towards the bottom. You might want to clean off all the junk that's uh, built up inside of your uh, little clips here. Uh, there probably is some cleaner that you can use uh, to do this. Uh, if I were if these were in worse shape, I would actually do that, but these are actually pretty clean. This car's not that old, but uh, you know, 
dusty brake pads is a pet peeve of mine. All right, let's go ahead and uh, add some lubricant. Again, make sure you're using high temp special lubricant for, uh, for brakes. Put some on the actual brakes themselves. Uh, this is going to keep your brakes from squeaking every time you take your foot off of the uh, off the brake. And the brake pads go in literally that easy. They just kind of fall in place, really. If they don't go in that easy, chances are one of these clips has come undone, or you're trying to wedge it on the wrong side of that small outer retaining uh, clip. There's a bunch of little little spring clips in here, uh, but don't fret. It's really not that uh, that complicated to put these. Uh, these back in place. They really literally go in that uh, that easy. Just like with the front, I'm going to go very slowly as I compress these pistons back in. I've also put a little bit of silicone spray on the rubber boot, keep it from cracking. It's in good shape now. If it weren't, I certainly would replace that. I'm going to go a little bit each time. And I'll rotate the caliper around and uh, if it fits, great. If not, I will repeat this process. Again, I don't want to bottom the piston all the way against the, uh, the bottom of the, um, of the caliper. It's probably good enough for right now. Let's just give it as a test, see how close we are. Very carefully slide it right back in. It looks like we're in good shape. And torque these down to 19 foot pounds. Place the brake line retaining bracket. And give your caliper piston boots a little spray of silicone spray. Now, when you get in the car for the first time, your brake pedal is going to go all the way to the floor. Uh, the engine's off right now. Just very slowly pump your brakes back up. Remember, you compressed your pistons all the way back into calipers. Just took me about two pumps here, maybe three, and uh, I think the brakes are back to normal here. Let's check our brake master cylinder reservoir. The fluid has returned back to its maximum height here. Uh, if this weren't, I would simply replace it with the uh, the correct amount of correct amount and type of brake fluid. Now, when you stop for the first time, your brakes might feel a little bit soft. That's most likely due to a little bit of oil and grease buildup on the rotors from the. Uh, the pad change. Also, the uh, rotors aren't exactly seated to the um, or the pads aren't seated to the rotors yet. Stop a few times and uh, the brake, uh, the grease will burn off and your pads will seat to the rotors. This is very common. Uh, just be aware of that when you stop for the first few times.